Yeah. How art can help changing minds and behavior is the headline of the last presentation we will get today. Uh, the, the speech will be presented by uh, Kelly Heaton from uh, Kelly Heaton Studio, and she will be accompanied by David Groom from Make. These uh, two guests, I think, we, we have online now. Uh, no. Kelly's here. <laughs> Kelly's so here. Kelly would like to come and join us. Oh, very good. I'm here, and I don't think David's joining us. But. Okay. <laughs> so he will not uh, join, but you are here live. This is very good. So we're yeah. going to pass your microphone. Oh. So it's lovely to have you here with us. Uh, just mention that uh, you did a fantastic front cover for Elector recently. Thank you. And uh, Kelly Heaton is very prominent on Twitter, for example. It's the place where I see most of your artworks. Uh, it's very exciting to see uh, the, how you've managed to combine art with uh, electronic components. Yeah, and thank uh, you very much. Lovely. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. So uh, Kelly has a very in, in, interesting bio. So Kelly Heaton is a cross-disciplinary artist electrical engineer and visionary of contemporary culture. Her art combines electrical engineering with nature, spirituality, sculpture, painting, printmaking, design and fashion. Uh, she makes beautiful functional circuits that mimic uh, so, uh, th that mimics, uh, mimic songbirds and insects with an uncanny lifelike quality. So uh, I'm very I'm look very forward to what you are telling us today and maybe showing us. Yeah, thank you very much. In fact, I can uh, supplement what you just said with some visuals so it's not quite so confusing. Uh, let's see, I'll grab this out. So uh, this is, uh, for example, uh, here, if I turn it on. <laughs> it's kind of hard to turn the knobs. And use the microphone at the same time, sorry. Yeah, help. <clears throat> Thank you, okay, let's see. So as I'm changing the knobs, you hear the birds singing different songs. So just a simple example of how I've used electricity to explore nature and show people that circuits don't only have to be practical, but they can also be playful. They can help us to better understand who we are and the electrical nature of ourselves and of animals and how we're all connected in one circuit. So um, I'd like to ask a, a question. Uh, your background uh, is as an electrical engineer. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what that career was, how it was, and, and how it's led you to where you are today with art. Yeah, actually, it's not accurate that my background is in electrical engineering. Okay. Um, my background is uh, in fine arts, and it wasn't until I was in my late 20s that I studied electrical engineering, and that came about because I was really interested in how energy flows through living systems, and I also experienced how electricity was you know, deeply impacting and shifting our culture and who we are as humans. And that was something I wanted to understand because as an artist, I ask the big questions, you know, who are we, where did we come from, what matters? And that's why art, I think, is here today. That's why Don invited me to be here because art has the ability to provoke those questions in us about, you know, who are we and where is all this going? And, you know, what do we value, right? Because that's what ethics fundamentally is all about. But getting back to your question, uh, I ended up as a fine artist with a traditional media background becoming involved in electrical engineering because I wanted to understand this medium that's impacting our time, that's changing everything, that's literally in my lifetime as a 50-year-old woman, when I was younger, you know, I didn't grow up with internet and computers everywhere and so on and so forth. And now suddenly, I mean, we're on the brink of artificial intelligence becoming a competitor to, you know, humans' intellectual superiority. So, I mean, we're, like, things have really changed. So that's what got me into uh, electrical engineering was not my engineering background per se, nor was it a practical choice. Choice. It was a choice that I made because I wanted to understand who are we as humans and how are we evolving now that technology is significantly deeply impacting culture. So what was it that, that you woke up one day and felt triggered 
I need to get to grips with this electronic stuff in order to um, really understand how it is and, and how it's impacting our lives. I think for me, the turning point was in my late 20s. Um, so but I went through college. We did not have email when I was in college. But after college, you know, email came along, cell phones came along. And um, I, I confess, um, I'm a little bit of a know-it-all. And it bothered me a lot that there were these people out there who knew how to make these clever devices that were transforming how I interacted with my world, and I didn't know how they were made. It frustrated me. I wanted to know, like, what's inside of these devices that are starting to control my life? Uh, so one thing led to another. It's a bit of a long story, but if you read the Electra article, you can, you can get the background in greater detail. I ended up uh, going to MIT as an artist. Uh, where I learned technology, and the aha moment was th at that point that, wow, not only can I be a humanist and an artist and make art with technology, but I need to because we need to get into the humanity of what technology is and own it as a culture, right? We are, as a human collective, the electrically creative people. We are not only consumers, we are all complicit in that creation. And so I feel strongly about the importance of, of deeply looking into the values of what it means to be electrically creative and to then see that you can empower yourself and shape where we're going. We don't have to just be like let along like a dog or a consumer on a leash, so to speak, right? We can be participants in it. Now, I think if uh, people like myself who is not artistic think about how artists work, it's uh, maybe for an, in front of an easel with paint or maybe a, a piece of stone and I'm chipping away to make a sculpture. That creative process happens in front of my very eyes at the end of the day or even once an hour's passed, I can see some progress, I can see some development. But as an engineer, it's slightly different. And if I'm developing a circuit board, um, that takes time before anything physical appears. And then maybe I need to do some software programming for a microcontroller. That takes time before I can even execute the code to see the result. Yeah. What's the process for you and how do you experience it? Yeah, that you, you raise a really interesting point and something that I do struggle with in my practice sometimes. The act of engineering can, can be so intellectually demanding uh, to get the circuits to work that sometimes I feel like, oh, you know, when do I get to actually express myself emotionally in this space? Um, I think that that's a two-part problem, uh, meaning that the pain point is that Technology and engineering uh, has thus far been quite separate and distinct from culture and fine art and psychology and so forth. I think that as we progress, it behooves all of us on both sides of that equation to merge them, get them closer into relationship, meaning that more and more artists push themselves into technology to find art in it, and more and more technologists push themselves into the human side to make technology that is human relatable, right? Because after all, I mean, this is our world to create as we see fit, right? Who are we if we're making technology that is inhuman and cold and leaves us feeling disenfranchised of our own culture, right? So I think that it's gonna go both ways and I do feel optimistic about the future that, that the technology of the future, I do believe, I hope and I believe and I will commit myself to this, that it will be more human than it is at this particular juncture in time because it's almost like it came out of Pandora's box and accelerated so fast that we, we haven't quite caught up with ourselves. Now, as an engineer, I think one of the challenges that all of us in the room have is that uh, we have specific goals that we need to hit. There's the optimization of the design, there's the reduction of the cost, yeah. um, there's meeting market need and, and functionality. I guess as an artist, you don't need to optimize. You can maybe even make a circuit that, electrical circuit, that is maybe less efficient, however you may want to define efficient, and um, in order to make a point artistically. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, of course, all artists are cost sensitive, but in a very different way. 
Um, and I think, as has already been discussed today, it's it's um, you know it's it's a good idea that engineers have maybe a little bit more humanity and exposure to being creative and not having such incredibly strict guidelines that are driving their development process with blinders on because, I mean, honestly, how, how could they not lose their humanity in a sense, right? If all they're, if all they're uh, up against is very, very strict uh, parameters about what they're developing and, and squeezing it down to the last fraction of a cent, I mean, it's no wonder that the result is something that maybe has no humanity in it anymore. Um, so I would say for those of you who are in leadership or management positions with engineers on your team, like, absolutely, give them more opportunity to, uh, I don't know, think a little bit laterally, right? Just just as a humane work environment, as, as you were speaking, you know, more, more engineers who are exposed to the leadership and the human factors, right? Not so siloed. Now, you did a recent installation in New York. I think it was called the Electronics Garden. Uh, circuit Garden. Circuit yeah. Garden, that's correct, yeah. What, what was the intention behind that, um, developing that piece? And uh, I think that was, was that your first installation that you've done of that type before? Uh, well, uh, no. I've done other large-scale installations, but I of that particular type. So Circuit Garden uh, is a 21-foot-long sculpture that takes the uh, beloved A-stable multi-vibrator, for those of you who are electrical engineers, and puts it on a huge scale. So suddenly, like, you're standing there, and you can see these large-scale sculptures sculptural resistors and transistors and capacitors. The point being that electronics are kind of growing up and becoming a new nature. And I also wanted people who don't know anything about electronics to be able to come and stand in front of it and be like, wow, OK. You know, on some level, that's what's inside of my cell phone. And I don't feel so left out anymore, right? I found it fantastic because it was, I remember my childhood growing up and, and taking things apart and seeing the electronics and you get up very close in order to, to see the resistors. Yeah. And it was exactly the same experience. What, what I dressed like a resistor for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, my, and my capacitor <laughs> hat, yes. <laughs> what was the response like from, from visitors? And was, was that sort of depending also a little bit on their own background, whether they understood the technology and didn't understand, uh, didn't have an affinity with, with electronics? Yeah, so that's a great question. It was really interesting. Um, definitely, I would get a lot of engineering enthusiasts who would come and be like, oh my gosh, Finally, I'm seeing, you know, my language in an art space. And so it's very validating for engineers to feel like that the art world was seeing them. Because right now, if you go to a museum, you, you know, frankly, really, it hasn't mixed that much, right? I also saw that people who had no technology background at all would relate to the installation on a visual level. Um, which I appreciated uh, sculpturally, but 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 often I would I would learn through conversation that they had absolutely no idea what they were looking at, so that was really interesting to me, right? And I think that's also an important thing to remember as technologists: the vast majority of of, of humans in the world consume technology, but they don't know anything about how it's made, and that lack of understanding can be very intimidating for people. Right, And it's important as a technology industry, if we want to heal uh, the planet, we need to heal ourselves and our relationships, empower our customers, embrace the maker movement, be more open in our dialogue, engage people in what engineering is really all about. That is what is going to help all of us like loosen this barrier to regain our, our humanity, right? Uh if your art helps normal people, normal people, uh, not, not electrical engineers to, <laughs> What's to understand. What's a normal person? Yeah, what is, what are normal people? Uh, to help more to understand what electronic is and make it visible. So this is maybe one of the goal of your art. How is the effect on the other side by the electric engineers? How, how do they react? Oh, what gosh. I think the, yeah, no, I think electrical engineers for the most part feel unseen and unappreciated. You know, their all of their work, their entire careers goes into making these like, I mean, I, astonishing devices. That, I mean, you walk around and see just the 
incredible intelligence and work that goes into what people are making that's here at Electronica, and yet m most of that effort is not recognized. It's hidden inside of a box or inside of a phone or inside of a computer, uh, and, the, and the public doesn't understand or appreciate the brilliance that engineers contribute. And so I think that you know, there's a morality issue amongst engineers of not feeling mm -hmm. adequately seen or understood. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's really powerful, right? Mm -hmm. We all need to be seen. We all need to be, to, you know, feel recognized and not have our work just, you know, hidden but, but behind the veneer of industrial design and marketing. Mm -hmm. Very important. Uh, so I think um, you are totally right. There's also engineers are artists. Uh, Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, maybe it's a motivation you want to give them that they talk more and show more that because no yeah. no, the normal people don't understand what works in their hand if they have a smartphone or, or something else. Or maybe in a few years they didn't realize, they will not, rea will not realize that it is electronics. I mean, at the end of the day, I think it's that classic example of, you know, two people who each have in their mind that the other person doesn't like them or doesn't want to talk to them, and then later realizing that they both wanted to relate to each other, but they both felt shy and embarrassed, right? So, I mean, yes, like, the general public, if they could see more about engineers, and if engineers could see more about uh, the general public so there's not that you know, that, that threatening barrier that mm -hmm. it, it, the, we, can, we can break through it. So one, one of the nice things I, I like about the work that you've produced that I've seen is, is things we've got the picture of Putin, for example, we've got the electronic garden, both of those use through hole components, which are traditionally quite colorful. We've got the resistors with their bands, right. we've got the, the different colored capacitors. Um, however, when we look at the development of the electronics industry, we're moving very much to high levels of high levels of integration and, and miniaturization, and yeah. we're coming very always to black chips. My One of my old bosses was always saying, why don't we offer them in different colors? That would make them more exciting. Is that a risk for you as an artist that you're going to run out of a color palette? <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's an interesting point. I, I would say, I mean, I'll adapt my practice, and as you just mentioned, I work in many different media. So, you know, if 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 the electronics industry insists on getting rid of through-hole components, I will be upset. I will cry <laughs> over it. However, <laughs> I will find another way to express myself. I think what would be more damaging about that decision is the fact that we need through-hole components so that there's a continuous stream of young engineers or older engineers, hobbyists, the maker community. These people need to be able to build circuits for the first time. You have to breadboard your components. You have to build your circuit in perf board or you know, manufacture your own PCB and, and stuff the components. And even for me, I would say actually as I'm aging, you know, I'm wearing my reading glasses trying to see tiny surface mount components and I can barely work with them. So yes, please, electronics industry, continue to make the components that we can touch because then, you know, otherwise then we're really losing, you know, that that concept contact with the creativity of, of electronic media. And we don't want this to just go into the hands of proprietary factories or else we've really cut ourselves off from, from the, the most important medium of our time. There is another group of artists that make uh, awake the electronics you can see here on the show to life the software developers. Yes. Do we have an idea how to make software will it, uh, visible <laughs> and make art with software? Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, it, so actually in the space of electronic art, uh, software is by far and away uh, the more common medium, like witness the recent NFT uh, and in our, you know, you know, so I, I would say um, artists who are working with software is 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 okay, and there are pathways to that. Mm -hmm. The reason I chose hardware is that we don't have software without hardware. That's one thing, and. It's important, I think, culturally, that everyone has some understanding of the, the fundamentals of electronic media, and that would be hardware, right? So that's one reason. Um, the other reason is that it's not in anyone's 
benefit if we forget analog electrical engineering. Digital is brilliant, don't get me wrong, but not every problem needs to be solved by digital. Uh, this is case in point to the electronics industry, we have a chip shortage. Should we be using digital chips to solve problems that could have an analog solution? No. Right? That would automatically go a long way towards making things easier in industry and in product availability, and also just risk managing the fact that our entire technology is dependent, our society is dependent upon technology, right? So, um, you know, I, I, um, there's a part of me, yes, I'm an artist, but I'm also kind of an analog electronics nerd who stands for like, hey, you know, sometimes you can do it with hardware alone, and don't forget that, please, right? Well, I can tell you that you have one more fan to add to your fan club. Um, Peter <laughs> okay. Sikora has uh, been uh, passionately sitting in front of his screen in Australia. And he tells me, this woman is great. She has so much <laughs> passion and understanding. I would love my granddaughter to watch this, give her my warmest wishes and appreciation. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you ever so much, Kelly Heaton, for joining us. Um, I think it's my fantastic. Uh, it's a, I find it incredible that we've, I've come so far through my life, uh, which hasn't been that long, and um, we haven't seen much in the way of, of art coming from electronics, and it's really nice to see that uh, added as an as a as a as a facet of of our community. Absolutely, I, I you know there are so many talented artists working with electronics, and I I too am surprised that we haven't seen more of it in the public sphere. I think that that is changing now, and I'm excited about it because um, the more people who can be creative in that space, the more we can foster this kind of dialogue between engineering and humanities and heal that gap for the benefit of our entire culture, right? And that is at its essence what ethics is about, what we value, common human values, right? So Fantastic. thank you well, so much. A round of applause, please, for Kelly Heaton. Thank you, thank you Kelly.